Welcome to Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, offering biblical guidelines, principles of the kingdom of heaven that will help you stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven and reap the benefits that accompany you as a citizen of the kingdom, the best the king has to offer. Today's topic, baby Christians can never become wise master builders. Kingdom maturity involves a process of spiritual growth. Continuous spiritual growth lead to strict adherence to willfully obeying and serving God, His Word, by faith, and that's trusting God, dependence upon God, what God believes and knows to be true. God never intended for His sons and daughters to remain baby Christians. I know of no parent who want their newborn to remain a baby. There are stages of growth that take place within our physical bodies and minds as we learn more and are exposed to more. And so God, our heavenly parent, wants his sons and daughters to grow into the full measure and stature of his son, Jesus Christ. Ephesians chapter 4, verses 13 through 15 from the New King James Version supports God's desire for his sons and daughters to grow into spiritual maturity. It reads, Till we all come to the unity of the faith, and of the knowledge of the Son of God, to a perfect man, to the measure of the stature and of the fullness of Christ, that we should no longer be children tossed to and fro and carried about with every wind of doctrine by the trickery of men, in the cunning craftiness of deceitful plotting, but, speaking the truth in love, may grow up in all things into him who is the head, Christ. Baby Christians can never become wise master builders. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 through 12 says, According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. I'm going to be transparent with you on this one today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my background, having received Christ as Savior. I received Jesus as my Savior in 1972, when I was 12 years old. But it wasn't until 1994 that I received him as Lord. So I wanted to, to stress that difference in time frame there. Uh, I was born again, saved <laughs> in 1972. But for 22 years, I had not grown to the measure of the stature and the fullness of Christ. Why? Well, in all of those 22 years, I had never made Jesus Lord, which means ruler, master, owner over my life by willfully surrendering my life to him as his bond servant. I was still a baby Christian. I had hardly grown spiritually, and what little growth I thought I could measure was drawn from my religious mindset based on Old Testament law. I was trying to live the Christian life by the power of my flesh so I wouldn't go to hell. <laughs> Obviously, that wasn't working for me. And by the end of my junior year in high school, I had backslidden. In my case, there was no one to disciple me after I got saved. I didn't understand that growing in my relationship with God would lead me to the place of discovering my divine assignment on earth. So I wandered aimlessly through life for 15 long years out of the will of God, living according to my fleshly desires, and because I was a spiritual baby in Christ. Satan made full use of those years trying to steal, kill, and destroy my destiny. But thank God for his grace and mercy. He was with me the entire time. I rededicated my life to Christ in 1992. Still, though, I had not made Jesus Lord of my life. But when I did, in January 1994, my life changed permanently for the good. I remember talking to God and telling him that I could no longer go on living. I'd reached the end of my strength. Have you been there? Someone listening may be there right now. When you reach the end of your strength, as the word of God says in Corinthians, as the Lord Jesus was telling Paul, when you are weak, then am I strong. God simply waits for us to reach the end of our strength sometimes. I'd reached the end of my strength. I could not continue to live the way I'd lived for the past 17 years or so. And in that moment, I willfully surrendered my life to God. I told God, God, I surrender to you. Whatever path you plan for my life, I choose to follow. You lead, I'll follow, was basically what I told him. 
And immediately I felt a cleansing, a refreshing, a new attitude suddenly swept over me, and I knew I'd been renewed in the spirit of my mind. It happened just that quickly, and I had messed up 22 years. Wow. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> this may apply to somebody today. If you are a born-again believer and have not willfully surrendered your life to Jesus Lord, you are very likely never going to properly grow into the spiritually mature saint or disciple or apostle God divinely ordained you to be. Spiritual maturity requires a process which begins with discipline, self-discipline. Not an easy task for most people saved or unsaved, since we all live in the flesh. I realized after becoming spiritually mature that what I had experienced over those many years as a backslider, in reality, served only to strengthen me for my kingdom purpose in life. I can now comfort those baby Christians who may be experiencing a pattern in their life similar to what I experienced with the same comfort that God used to comfort me in all my tribulations. So after my restoration, God put me on the road to becoming a wise master builder, and I quickly learned that this road is not paid with milk. <laughs> it is paid through discipleship, which is a process of spiritual growth. I had to be weaned from milk and taught how to digest strong meat, as the Word of God says. This required me to go through the process of being fathered and mentored by spiritually mature men and women who taught me how to renew my mind with the Word of God. This was a process of development and transformation over a period of time. Removing the soil of a life driven by the desires of the flesh is not an overnight transformation. It requires discipline, steadfast commitment, and perseverance on the part of the believer. Watch this. And grace and time on God's part. 1 Peter chapter 2, verses 1 through 3. Therefore, laying aside all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and all evil speaking, as newborn babes desire the pure milk of the word, that you may grow thereby, if indeed you have tasted that the Lord is gracious. And let's back that up with this powerful verses of scripture from Hebrews chapter 5, verses 13 and 14. For everyone who partakes only of milk is unskilled in the word of righteousness, for he is a babe. But solid food belongs to those who are of full age, that is, those who by reason of use have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil. Spiritual growth is a process that begins with discipleship. Jesus illustrated this when he called 12 men from among those who followed him, and they became his leaders, whom he ordained as apostles. Jesus understood that these men required development and they would have to endure the process of transformation over time, a period of three years, in order to effectively build a kingdom once he was gone. Mark chapter 3, verses 13 through 15, And he went up on the mountain and called to him those he himself wanted, and they came to him. Then he appointed twelve, that they might be with him, and that he might send them out to preach, and to have power to heal sicknesses and to cast out demons. This is a process that demands spiritual growth. And spiritual growth is from the inside out. The nature of discipleship is to mature you to the place where you are conformed to the image of God's Son, Jesus. True discipleship deals with your entire makeup, spirit, soul, and body. It is the process by which you become mature, fully functioning as a commissioned kingdom level leader. And as you allow Holy Spirit to release his fruit into your spirit, it transforms your soul, which transforms your body. This is the point where you begin to see things from having matured in your understanding of God's kingdom assignment for your life. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 23 and 24. Now may the God of peace himself sanctify you completely, and may your whole spirit soul, and body be preserved blameless at the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. He who calls you is faithful, who also will do it. Spiritual maturity is about relationship with God, growing to know him as father. Baby Christians know God as God. In other words, they love God and they thank him for saving them, but they don't know God as father. There's no intimate relationship there. 
God is still in their minds, quote, up there, end quote, and they are, quote, down here, end quote. <laughs> they never learn to walk in a sustained faith in the word of God they say they believe. Jesus never prayed to God. The word of God says he prayed to his father. There is no Jesus separate from the father. There is no Holy Spirit separate from Jesus Christ. And if you're saved through your faith in Christ, there's no separation between you and the Father, you and the Son, or you and Holy Spirit. 1 Corinthians 6.17 says, But he who is joined to the Lord is one spirit with him. How does one become joined to the Lord? Becoming one spirit with him. Jesus gives us the answer in the Gospel of John, chapter 17, verse 17 and verse 21. I'll read those two together. Sanctify them by your truth. Your word is truth. That they all may be one as you, Father, are in me and I am in you. That they also may be one in us that the world may believe that you sent me. Okay, there it is. Our Heavenly Father has provided a process of transformation from spiritual babes in Christ to spiritual giants, sons and daughters who carry out his kingdom assignment as kings and priests unto God, ambassadors for Christ, which involves intimacy with him through Holy Spirit empowerment. As you abide in Christ, Intimacy is maintained and the process toward transformation is forged. In this process, God reveals his will to your mind. Abiding in Christ as his word abides in you transport you into a spiritual dimension of prioritizing scripture. You give God your mind and he sanctifies it by his truth. His word is truth. This truth governs your thoughts and illuminates your mind, bringing you into the place of expectation for manifestation of your kingdom assignment. As Proverbs 23, 7a says, for as he thinks in his heart, so is he. Whatever you consistently focus on in your mind is what you will become. So if you have become spiritually mature, a wise master builder, it is because you established a consistent pattern over time of thinking like a spiritually mature wise master builder. Throughout the New Testament, growth and spiritual maturity of every believer is emphasized. And the key elements of this growth involves a revelation of scripture, Holy Spirit empowerment, trials and tests that reveal strengths and weaknesses, and spiritual parents who mentor you to keep you on track toward discipleship, which simply is conformity to the image of Christ. Through discipleship, you develop the ability to conceive and understand God's divine plan for your life so that you are thoroughly equipped to complete your kingdom assignment. As Paul said to Timothy in 2 Timothy 3.17, that the man of God may be complete, thoroughly equipped for every good work. You become spiritual mature, reflecting and demonstrating the fruit of the Spirit. In this standard, your spiritual eyes are always open to see the movement and works of God. Your spiritual ears are always open to hear divine rhema from God. And the eyes of your mind are constantly illuminated with the spirit of wisdom and revelation and the knowledge of him. I love this prayer by the Apostle Paul from Ephesians chapter 1, verses 17 and 18. That the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give unto you the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of him, the eyes of your understanding being enlightened, that ye may know what is the hope of his calling and what the riches of the glory of his inheritance in the saints. Let's take a look at what can occur in the life of a believer who never matures in Christ after their initial salvation. One very obvious result is that he never discovers what the hope of God's calling is for his life. Why? Because the eyes of his understanding were never enlightened with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of God, which leads to never acquiring the riches of the glory made available for him as a saint of God. In other words, 
he never allowed Holy Spirit to empower him in the form of developing godly character. He never sought the Lord for a mentor or spiritual parent who could guide him through the discipleship process. And he became unwilling to endure trials that would have revealed his strengths and weaknesses, not knowing that God would use his trials to make him better. The lack of spiritual maturity most often results in dullness of hearing. Hear this, hear this. The lack of spiritual maturity most often results in dullness of hearing. Hearing who? Hearing God, his word, his rhema. In other words, baby Christians don't hear God clearly. They cannot distinguish the still small voice of the Lord because they failed to make use of the above stated resources that would have trained their spiritual senses to discern both good and evil. Making reference to Melchizedek's kingly and priestly order, the author of the epistle to the Hebrews, of course, and I believe that is the Apostle Paul, he makes it clear that the Jewish Christians were slow and lacked the ability to spiritually comprehend the depth of revelation relative to this kingly and priestly order as it related to their current standard through New Testament grace. Paul wanted to explain more to them about the eternal nature of Melchizedek, king and priest, without genealogy, no beginning, no ending. It's eternal, but he couldn't get anywhere with them because they were dull of hearing. And because of the dullness of their hearing, or their lack of spiritual maturity, we could say, he could not release into their spirit the wisdom and revelation of the order of Melchizedek in the knowledge of Jesus. Why? Here again, the eyes of their understanding had never been enlightened to receive the gift of grace as opposed to strict adherence to the law. This made it difficult to teach them. Let's take a look at scripture from the Message Bible. I love this one. The Message Bible, which I believe makes my point more clearly. Hebrews chapter 5 verses 11 through 14 and chapter 6 verses 1 through 3. The Apostle Paul said, I have a lot more to say about this, but it is hard to get it across to you since you've picked up this bad habit of not listening. By this time, you ought to be teachers yourselves. Yet here I find you need someone to sit down with you and go over the basics on God again, starting from square one, baby's milk, when you should have been on solid food long ago. Milk is for beginners, inexperienced in God's ways. Solid food is for the mature who have some practice in telling right from wrong. So come on, let's leave the preschool finger-painting exercises on Christ and get on with the grand work of art. Grow up in Christ. The basic foundational truths are in place. Turning your bike on salvation by self-help and turning in trust toward God, baptismal instructions, laying on of hands, resurrection of the dead, eternal judgment. God helping us will stay true to all that. But there's so much more. Let's get on with it. Wow. And I love that. I love the Message Bible. What a translation. It speaks in contemporary language. It basically points to the fact that these Christians had been saved long enough to have matured in the Word of God and their understanding enlightened to receive revelation knowledge of present truth. When there is no revelation of present truth, people tend to get stuck in their Old Testament mindset stagnation rather than advancement takes place, and they have to be trained again. This lack of advancement in spiritual maturity ultimately led to their bad habit of not listening, dull of hearing. So obviously they had been saved for a substantial period of time and should have matured in the word of grace, but lack of spiritual maturity resulted in the fact that they were unskillful in the word, not understanding the benefits of the cross. This is the status of a spiritual baby. However, as it is explained in the text, if you're going to mature in the Lord, you must learn to walk after the Spirit by placing your faith in the finished work of the Lord Jesus on the cross and not walking according to your flesh. Consistency in this process will prepare you to digest strong meat, the weightier matters of the Word of God. You will mature and receive deeper revelations of wisdom and knowledge of Christ because you will have had your spiritual senses exercised to grow into deeper levels of spirituality. You will not be dull of hearing revelatory knowledge from God, never advancing in the gospel of the kingdom as a mature believer, where saints get equipped and commissioned as kingdom leaders to carry out their kingdom assignment, 
which is similar to the commissioning of military officers who become military leaders, strategists who carry out the assignment in the theater of war to which they've been assigned. Discipleship requires discipline. You must learn to discipline yourself for spiritual growth in order to successfully fulfill your kingdom assignment. Obviously, if you don't consistently exercise yourself spiritually, you will take on more carnality and not be in very good spiritual shape. The carnal state is the result of Christians who never exercise their spiritual muscles to lift heavy objects or endure hardships as good soldiers of Jesus Christ. Baby Christians, through lack of spiritual maturity, allow little things to keep them from advancing and becoming wise master builders. They pile one excuse on top of another. (laughs) Excuses like, I really did try it, but it didn't work for me. I just can't read the Bible for long periods of time. It makes me sleepy. Well, I'm not a very disciplined person to begin with. It's just the way I am. Or, child, God knows my heart. Have you ever heard any of these lame excuses? (laughs) If you are currently saying any of these things, you have not yet submitted yourself to the empowerment available to you through Holy Spirit. His presence in your spirit is a provision of power from which you may draw to discipline yourself. God already knows your weaknesses and has already taken them into account. That's why he supplies you with his grace. God does for us what we could never do for ourselves. Knowing this, you can find self-discipline in the grace of God as you seek first God's kingdom pattern. This is the kind of intimate relationship God requires of you. He requires it of all of us. It builds within your spirit the power of his presence and strengthens you to meet the demands of your kingdom assignment. Discipline is a requirement of sonship, of spirituality, of excellence, of covenant, and of intimate family relationship. Richard Foster, for example, a prolific Christian teacher and author, widely known for his books on Christian living, including his bestseller, Celebration of Discipline. It was published in 1988 by Harper Collins, and he writes, watch this, superficiality is the curse of our age. The doctrine of instant satisfaction is a primary spiritual problem. The desperate need today is not for a greater number of intelligent people or gifted people, but for deep people. I can very well relate to that. In 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 26 through 27, and let's take this one from the New Living Translation. Apostle Paul said this, So I run with purpose in every step. I am not just shadow boxing. I discipline my body like an athlete, training it to do what it should. Otherwise, I fear that after preaching to others, I myself might be disqualified. In the epistle to the Hebrews, Chapter 12, verses 7 through 11. Let's take this one from the NIV, the New International Version. Apostle Paul adds this poignant passage about the necessity and benefit of discipline. Endure hardship as discipline. (laughs) God is treating you as his children. For what children are not disciplined by their father? If you are not disciplined and everyone undergoes discipline, then you are not legitimate not true sons and daughters at all. Moreover, we have had human fathers who disciplined us and we respected them for it. How much more should we submit to the Father of Spirits and live? They disciplined us for a little while as they thought best, but God disciplines us for our good in order that we may share in his holiness. No discipline seems pleasant at the time, but painful. Later on, however, it produces a harvest of righteousness and peace for those who have been trained by it. Baby Christians never get that far, choosing ultimately to remain in their baby or carnal state where they are still fed on spiritual milk, although they have been saved for many years. It is very difficult to speak spiritual things to a Christian locked in a carnal mindset for lack of growth, even though he has the mind of Christ. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says, do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Renewal is an ongoing process, not a one-time event, and requires effort, obedience, and discipline. 
The problem for baby Christians is they do not allow the mind of Christ, which they possess, to possess them. Rather, they trust their sense knowledge. But in Philippians chapter 2, verse 5, Paul says, Let this mind be in you, which was also in Christ Jesus. When you let something happen, it is capable of operating under its own power. Just don't interfere. However, the carnal mind, the undisciplined spirit, cannot restrict itself from interfering with the process that God has already put in place. As a result, he struggles to receive revelation knowledge that is beyond what he has learned through the gospel of salvation and generally rejects the more spiritually mature route that leads to the gospel of the kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 1 through 3. Here's what Paul says. And I, brethren, could not speak to you as to spiritual people, but as to carnal, as to babes in Christ. I fed you with milk and not with solid food. For until now, you are still not able to receive it. And even now, you are still not able. For you are still carnal. For where there are envy, strife, and divisions among you, are you not carnal and behaving like mere men? Baby Christians possess this same mindset today. They are spiritually immature, not having disciplined themselves to allow the process of development and spiritual maturity to take place through their intimate relationship with God, their Father. They're carnal Christians still, and they're functioning in spiritual immaturity. They act and speak like worldly people. They never develop beyond just being saved. So then, baby Christians can never become wise master builders. As a believer, you are God's building. Let's read that from scripture. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 9. This means you are God's property, his possession. And since God formed you in his mind before he created the earth, he has a special assignment for you that fit within the earth he created and the time period in which you were born. Remember, God did not create man for the earth. He created the earth for man. As a wise master builder, God used his skill, his established standard, principles, and predominance as a chief contractor and thoroughly equipped you for the successful completion of your kingdom assignment. You too are a wise master builder in the mind of God. I would submit to you that a wise master builder is a spiritual mature saint who has discovered his kingdom assignment through intimate relationship and trust in Holy Spirit to empower him to endure the process of development and transformation through grace and time to the image of Christ. He is a kingdom level leader filled with the spirit of wisdom and revelation in the knowledge of Christ. He is God's workmanship, a spiritual architect who knows how to build upon the foundation of Jesus Christ with superior materials who God has commissioned to complete his divine assignment on earth by advancing the kingdom of God and bringing glory to his name. You are a spiritual architect whom God has placed in the earth to build his kingdom. 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 10 and 11 says, According to the grace of God, which was given to me, as a wise master builder, I have laid the foundation, and another builds on it. But let each one take heed how he builds on it. For no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. <laughs> God has equipped you with his nature, power, and glory to build upon the foundation of his dear son. Take heed how you build. Jesus was not a weak, immature saint. He was strong, mature, and learned obedience through the things that he suffered. Hebrews 5, 8, 9 says, And having been perfected, he became the author of eternal salvation to all who obey him. You too must be perfected or fitted for completion of your kingdom assignment through things that will definitely require suffering for Christ's sake. But in the process, you are transformed to become the author of your kingdom purpose. Being perfected for your kingdom assignment requires a process of being built into a spiritual mature kingdom level leader commissioned to carry out your kingdom assignment and build other faithful men and women along the way. Your sincere desire should reflect your loyalty, devotion, and faithful commitment to your wise master builder, Jesus Christ. But be assured, baby Christians, can never become wise master builders. If you would like to refer this episode to others, click on share. 
and subscribe to the YouTube channel to stay up to date when new episodes drop. Thanks for joining me. I'm glad you did. I hope you join me next time for Kingdom Compliance with Dr. James Bruton, where we stay tuned in to the frequency of heaven.